Is there a player in Kentucky's front court not named Oscar Sheebway that could have a huge impact on the team this season? We talk about that on today's episode of Locked On Kentucky. You are Locked On Kentucky, your daily podcast on the Kentucky Wildcats, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, what's going on, Big Blue Nation? Welcome on in to Locked On Kentucky, your daily Kentucky Wildcats podcast. I'm your host, Lance Dahl, writer for Sports Illustrated for various SEC-related things. But on this podcast specifically, we take a dive into all things Kentucky athletics. Thank you so much for making Locked On Kentucky your first listen every single day. I want to remind everybody out there that we are free and available on all platforms. On today's episode of Locked On Kentucky, Going to be talking a little bit about somebody that that I kind of glossed over. Just a few episodes ago, we were talking about potential breakout players for the Kentucky Wildcats this upcoming season, and I glossed over somebody that will, that will be starting at Power Forward, barring something unforeseen. Jacob Toppin, is he ready for a breakout season for the Kentucky Wildcats? Now that he's made his way into the starting rotation, is it his time to shine? You look at his numbers, obviously, as everyone knows, played at Rhode Island for one year before transferring to Kentucky, averaged 5.1 points per game in 18 and a half minutes at Rhode Island. Averaged 5.2 points per game in 17 minutes during his first season with the Kentucky Wildcats. And then this past year, averaged 6.2 points per game over the course of 17.7 minutes. And now he heads into his senior season looking to build on what he's kind of done. He's he's laid the foundation, right? He's slowly developed, and now that he's probably going to eclipse somewhere between 20 to 25 minutes, if not more, considering how uh, Coach John Calipari likes to use his starting lineup and how much he likes to play his starting five. He doesn't really like to take a deep look into the bench, I would like to think that if we're just basing this off of statistics, he will be able to take a step forward, shooting over 50% from the floor uh, throughout his entire career, 53.2% to be specific. He is a 72.2% free throw shooter, averages 3.6 rebounds, and a little under an assist per contest. But last season, he averaged 1.1 assists as opposed to half a turnover per game. And I think there is a lot to like about Jacob Toppin outside of just the facts of like, well, if it's minutes go up, his stats are probably going to go up. I think that if you look at some of the traits that he has as a power forward, they're very, very likable. And if he can just add a little bit onto his game, uh, I think that he would be a very solid NBA player. I think the number one thing that you have to note about Jacob Toppin, and this is not a revelation, this is just something that you see and observe when watching Jacob Toppin. It's one of the first things that comes to mind. His explosiveness and his bounce. Really, really bouncy player can get up. We saw a lot of incredible dunks, a lot of really nice finishes during his time uh, with the Wildcats over the past couple of seasons, but specifically this past year had some really, really nice finishes. Uh, A couple of one-handed dunks, one in particular I can remember against LSU. I believe he got fouled on, if I'm not mistaken, And then also there was this 360 dunk against Auburn. Uh, He's got some crazy athleticism and and some some crazy bounce. And then on top of that, he's really good in the transition game. So Keon Brooks, Kentucky's starting power forward last year, was good in the transition game. And he was really good at getting to the rim. And as was Jacob Toppin. Whenever he was able to get a steal or get an outlet on the fast break, he would just smoothly transition to the basket. And I think the the word I want to use here just about Jacob Toppin overall as a player is he glides. He glides to the basket. His jump shot has improved. And I think the most important thing is whenever he's getting around screens or he's stepping away from the free free throw line, he just kind of glides into the mid-range, just kind of glides to the rim whenever he wants to. Really, really smooth, fluid player. Still not a three-point shooter. But I think that he's better. Uh, he's He has improved his jump shot outside of the paint. I think we got to see that, especially towards the end of last season, just putting some nice touch on some jumpers uh, and some floaters. 
I, I think that he's trying to expand his offensive game, and he's if he's able to do that, if he's able to become a three point shooter, then certainly. I think that uh, I think that he could potentially break out for the Wildcats this season. And something else I want to note: just talking about gliding and finishing at the rim, he's got really strong hands around the rim. Really, really strong hands. When you go watch him back, you know, go back and watch the highlights. Uh, anytime he would uh, in a, encounter contact around the rim, uh, he'd go right up through it and he'd finish. And I know there, there were times where he didn't last season, but more often than not, I think you really had to point to Jacob Toppin's strong hands uh, whenever he was finishing. Uh, around the rim. And then also something else I want to point out here, really good on backdoor sets for the Wildcats. Caught a lot of lobs. I think he was going, I think he's going to do that a lot this season as well. And I think the only thing that you can really ask for in terms of just expanding his game is to kind of develop that outside shot. He's not a three point shooter. I know he shot over 40% from three this past season. You go back and watch it. I think he banked in like three threes. He's not that great of a jump shooter. His mechanics on his three uh, not the best in the world. I think that's something that he could potentially work on, but I mean, if it's his shot, it's his shot. And I don't think the Wildcats are honestly going to be asking him to shoot the three ball a lot. I mean, they didn't with Keon, so why would they with, with Toppin, right? So overall, I think that you like the progression he's had statistically with essentially the same amount of minutes. And I think that you have to assume if his uh, minutes go up, his numbers go up. And then on top of that, he's got some really, really positive traits, some likable things that you want out of your small forward. Also played good defense around the rim at times last season. I think that this is somebody that Kentucky is going to want to see uh, his role expanded. I think it's somebody that Kentucky is going to want to see get a little bit more aggressive in terms of offense, just kind of creating his own stuff. I think that this is uh, this is a guy in Jacob Toppin, that could potentially do that for the Wildcats this season. I don't know. I, it, it really def, it really is determined by your definition of breakout season. Because if he averages like 12 points a game, I mean, that's double what he's done up until this point. I, uh, in my mind, that's a breakout season. He doubled his production. But uh, I, I think that some people would take it a step further and say, no, he's got to average like 15 a game and, and maybe get closer to a double-double per contest and... I don't necessarily think I see him doing that, but I can absolutely see him averaging 12 or 13 and really improving in his final year with the Wildcats. If you've got thoughts about what uh, Jacob Toppin could potentially do for the Wildcats this season, leave it in the YouTube comments below. And by the way, yes, I have seen some of your questions. I'm going to get to some of them. Some of them are going to be quite honest with you. I can't answer. I'm not saying that like I know and I can't tell you. It's like I, I like literally I have no way to tell you whether or not certain things that are, are happening around Kentucky's program. Because a couple of questions were asking very specific things about like like some of the ways that the uh, the team just kind of does things. And I, 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 I genuinely, I can't, I can't give an answer. But I will try and get to some of y'all's questions. But if you've got thoughts on this, leave them in the YouTube comments. If you're listening on podcast format, you can hit me on the socials at LockedOnUK on Twitter. All right. In a second, I want to talk about uh, Adu Thiero, the newest commitment to the Kentucky Wildcats. I want to talk about what to expect out of, out of uh, him in just a second. Before we do that, though, I want to tell you guys about our friends over at Built Bar. Summer is coming, and with summer, you're going to need to get some food on the go. Built Bars are the perfect snack to take with you on your family vacations. You can throw them in your bags, in your kids' backpacks, and you can make sure that everyone has a Built Bar so that they are fueled for your summer adventures. And the best part about Built Bars, not only are they healthy, but they're also really, really good for or, and really good for you, but they're also delicious. They also taste great. They're covered in 100% real chocolate. You can eat healthy and actually enjoy it at the same time. You can replace your candy bars with these. Built has a ton of new flavors out. They've got these new things as well called Puffs, which are the first ever protein-infused marshmallow. Uh, again, like I said, crazy flavors like banana cream pie and churro. Really great flavors uh, here for the summer. They've also really, uh, they're really low in calories as well. 130 calories, about 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. That's pretty solid, and it's significantly better than a candy bar, and it tastes just the same. And you can go to built.com right now and you can use promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your order. Again, use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off. That is over at built.com. All right, continuing along here on the Wednesday edition of Locked On Kentucky, Lance Dahl here with you. Really appreciate you making Locked On Kentucky your first listen 
every single day. All right, Adu Thiero, uh, he is committed to the Wildcats, was unranked before Kentucky started scouting him, uh, is now a three-star according to 24-7 Sports. What should we expect out of Thiero, not just this season, but also throughout his Kentucky career, however long that may be? Well, first thing I want to point out here, just we talked about Jacob Toppin's traits. I want to talk about Thiero's traits for a second. Go and watch some film on him. I'm going to highly encourage you to get on your get on the YouTube machine, look this guy up, uh, and and see what he has to offer. He gives me big uh, Shea Gilgis Alexander vibes. Gives me big uh, SGA vibes. Long, lanky guard that has patience and excellent excellent body control when it comes to attacking downhill and finishing at the rim. He's really really good at getting into the lane and finishing. Really patient guy. Knows when to pick and choose his spots. Knows when to pick and choose in terms of attacking. He's also got nice vision. He also understands when he needs to kick it out or dish it down to somebody else. Really, really solid both in transition and in the half court offensively. Uh, and also, he's pretty solid as a defender too. I mean, whenever you're matching him up at six foot five against your average sides guard, I would say that right there, there's a little bit of a, a mismatch, a little bit of an advantage, advantage in Thiero's favor considering you will probably be a couple inches taller and probably be a little bit heavier than your average point guard. And yes, this is this guy is listed as a point guard at borderline 6'6". Six, six, and I've been reading some things recently. He was like under six feet tall during his freshman year of high school. This kid could be still growing to like 6'7", six, 6'8", six, which is insane. And I, I think that Kentucky may get to see the benefits of that because he's, he's going to be a project. He's going to be a three- or four-year guy. Uh, and I, I think that he's going to have time to develop here at the Wildcats. But... Uh, with the Wildcats. So I think that long term, he could pan out to be, if we're talking about ex- expectations here, he could p- pan out to be somebody that is not necessarily like a secret weapon for the Wildcats, but it's just like a consistent, reliable threat offensively. And, and, and here, here's my thought about this. is like, I, I really enjoy these three and four year players, right? Really enjoy getting guys that can come in and develop. We've just talked about one of them and Jacob Toppin heading into his senior year. This will be his fourth year in college. There are some folks out there that are frustrated with Coach John Calipari because they believe that one of the primary sales pitches he has towards recruits is that, well, Kentucky can get you to the NBA. And some fans are disgruntled with the fact that, like, they don't want Kentucky just to be a factory for NBA players. They want it to be a place where kids come to play because it's Kentucky. And I agree with that sentiment, but some people take it too far. I I think with this kid here, that logic doesn't apply because I don't think the sales pitch from Cal was... Yo, we can uh, we can get you into the NBA. We can do it right quick. I, I genuinely believe that this guy, this kid in Thiero, he's he's going to be a work in progress. And I, I just don't I just don't think that that was the pitch for this kid. And I think that there were good intentions surrounding his commitment. And there were some other things out there uh, as far as like, well, why is why is Coach Cal reaching out to a three star? Like, not everybody has to be a five star. Not everybody has to have a perfect rating in order for it to catch a coach's eye. I mean, crap, he's been around the game for for forever now, so you would like to think that whenever he sees talent, he's looking past star rankings for a second, and he's saying, okay, I don't care what that guy's ranked. He's good enough for my system, and I can make him into something special. I want to see what happens with the Duthiero. Thiero. So my expectation is he's not going to get a lot of minutes this year, but his expectations will probably revolve around how much Calipari actually wants to use him after this season. Because you look at next year's potential, not this not this season, but like 2023, the 2023-2024 season. If you look at that roster, I mean, it's going to be, in terms of just talking about the backcourt here, after Severe Wheeler le- leaves, it's going to be Reed Shepard, it's going to be C.J. Frederick likely, and it's going to be a do Thiero. And you've got to get a recruiter transfer so- somebody in there. But if you don't, Thiero is probably getting some decent minutes. A- if Calipari actually utilizes him. And so I'm saying that his ceiling is probably set with the amount of minutes that Cal gives him. I think if he gets more minutes in his sophomore season, he'll have a chance to actually step up and prove what he can do. And I, I really like some of the things that I've seen on film. And I'm a huge fan of SGA as well. So it's just kind of like for me, it's it's a little bit of a bias thing, but still. Also, I just want to say really, really quickly, I think that similar to Thiero, I think Jacob Toppin 
his expectations revolve around how much Calipari wants to use him as well this season. I mean, you could see Toppin start, but you could see him kind of split minutes with whoever, Damian Collins, whoever you want, whoever you may think it is at power forward. That may just be what Cal likes to do this season. But yeah, I think that both of these guys, the more opportunities they get, the more that they are going to be able to prove that they can be something valuable or special to the team. And Thierro's obviously got a lot more time to prove that than Toppin does now. But still, I'm excited about both these guys. I'm really excited about what Thierro could do for uh, the team long term. All right, I want to talk about something I saw on Twitter. I saw uh, Matt Sack, I believe, and some of you have opinions on Matt Sack. Put it aside for a second. He had a really interesting, fun question, a hypothetical, and I'm going to run down my opinion on the hypothetical, and I want to get your thoughts on it as well. I want to talk about what that is in just a second. Before we do that, though, I want to tell you guys about our friends at Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing number of makes and models, it's now virtually impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts that you need. Why would you endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing the only brand their warehouse happens to carry? You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. You can save time and money when using Rock Auto. Why would you choose to spend 30%, 50%, even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or car dealership when you can just use Rock Auto? Auto And Rock Auto's uh, uh, prices, they're reliably low for every single customer out there, and they've got everything that you could need. Brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, and even new carpet. You can go to rockauto.com and and right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. And you can write Locked On in their How Did You Hear About Us box so that they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. That's over at rockauto.com. All right, wrapping up the Wednesday edition of Locked on Kentucky, Lance Dahl here with you. So, saw something on Twitter from Matt Sack. Uh, Some of you may know him in the Twitter sphere. And it was a really interesting question that he posed to just the the audience. And it was specifically specifically directed towards Kentucky's fan base, but some other SEC fans chimed in and started doing it for their school, so I wanted to do it here as well. So, this was the tweet. Pick one former Kentucky player that you need to do these things. I'm going to run down the list here before I give my answers. Pick one former Kentucky player that you need to get a bucket, get a defensive stop, and this is not all in one answer. This is for, for, for different. This, this can be a different player for everything. Get a bucket, get a defensive stop, make a three, get a rebound, make free, two free throws, and go for 30 points in a game. So let's go through these here uh, real quick. And I really want to get your thoughts on these uh, in the YouTube comments. I'm probably going to pin this uh, in the YouTube comments as well. And if you're listening on podcast format, hit me on the socials. You can actually go and find this tweet and quote tweet it yourself. Give your thoughts on it. To get a bucket, one former Kentucky player that you need to get a bucket. I'm going to limit myself to the John Calipari era here for a second for this, for this list. My bucket getter is going to be John Wall. Uh, I think that you could go for with a few different players for this answer. In fact, I really had a hard time picking a guy for this. Tyler Hero, uh, Shea Gilgis Alexander, Anthony Davis, I think would all be acceptable answers as well. But John Wall is going to be my bucket getter in this list. Get a defensive stop. This is not really difficult for me. You could go with a couple other guys here, but I think Anthony Davis is going to be my guy to get a defensive stop. One of the best shot blockers uh, in Kentucky basketball history, one of the best defenders uh, in just college basketball, period. Uh, yeah, Anthony Davis. I think if we're gonna, if I'm gonna ask some individual person to get an v- individual stop in an isolation situation, picking a former Wildcat, it's Anthony Davis. Make a three. Uh, Deron Lamb. This is not difficult. Devin Booker would be my second option. Tyler Hero would be would be my third. Lamb was shooting 47.5 percent from three during his career with the Wildcats. Enough said. He's he's my guy. Get a rebound. Uh, this is not recency bias. I just think that uh, some people some people out there may ridiculously claim that it is. Uh, but I think if I asked 10 people, nine of them would agree with me. Oscar Shibway, I'm going to ask to get a rebound. I don't really feel like I have to say much there. He was averaging over 15 a game this past season with the Wildcats. Yeah, enough said. He's my rebounder. To make two free throws... I saw some people say Emmanuel quickly. I'm going to go with Tyler Hero here. Shot 93% from the foul line during his time with Wildcats. 
Uh, that's good enough for me. If I'm going to ask somebody, somebody to make two free throws, I'd rather go with the 93% free throw shooter than the 89% free throw shooter. That's, But, you know, to each their own. And then the final thing here, to go for 30 points in the game, I saw a lot of people say this, and I'll say it as well. Malik Monk. I'm going with Malik Monk. Uh, after he dropped 47 on North Carolina, and I just feel like he would be the guy to, to make that happen. Uh, if if Kentucky were to specifically go into a game with a game plan, like, okay, we got to get somebody 30. I think Malik Monk would, would be their best option. And also, now that, I'm, now that I'm thinking about it, I think if we're asking make a three, if this is like a clutch situation where you have to make a three, you could go Aaron Harrison for that one as well. Just, just a thought there. But anyway, I'm probably going to pin this in the comments, probably going to put it out on social or just retweet it uh, for you guys. Pick one former Kentucky player that you need to get a bucket, get a defensive stop, make a three, get a rebound, make two free throws, and go for 30 points in a game. Would love to hear your thoughts on this hypothetical. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked On Kentucky. You can follow the show on Twitter at Locked On UK. You can follow me on Twitter at Lance Dahl underscore, and you can follow the show on Instagram at Kentucky Podcast. I will see you all tomorrow for another episode of Locked on Kentucky. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day and God bless.